Offend ye not. Hinder ye not. Despise ye not. Leave not ye Legos on the floor. I don't know. I feel like everything sounds better when you put ye in it. Hey, I'm Autumn and welcome back to The Commonplace. I'm the host of The Commonplace podcast and this season, if you don't know, we are covering Mason's 20 principles of education. And now we're on number four already. We have talked about the ideas of authority and docility and how you put them together in your home. But in this last principle, principle number four, Mason says that those two things are limited by the respect due to your child's will. Technically, she says personality, but in Victorian English, she does not want to know your child's Enneagram number. Instead, what she's trying to do is help moms and teachers, or the mother teacher as we are known, uh, how they manipulate their children to do the things that they want them to do. And trust me, I know nobody wants to think that they manipulate their children. We don't want to think that we cause them to fear, or we misuse their love for us, or that we use suggestion or influence or play upon one of their desires to get what we want. But we do, like we all do, it happens. But don't worry, Mason does come in in principle number five with the three tools we do have to rightly motivate a child. So we'll be getting back to that next week on the podcast or in two weeks over here if you do wanna hit subscribe so that you don't miss it. Now today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull a principle straight from Mason that she pulls straight from the Bible. She takes something from Matthew 18 and 19 and builds a very helpful framework to help a mom kind of catch herself before she might tip in to manipulation of her child. And the phrase is, offend ye not, despise ye not, hinder ye not. It just sounds so much better when you use ye, like it sounds like you really know what you're talking about. So I'm gonna read us a quote from Mason because this was way too long for me to try to memorize for today. You ready? It may surprise parents who have not given much attention to the subject to discover also a code of education in the Gospels, expressly laid down by Christ. It is summed up in three commands, and all three have a negative character, as if the chief thing required of grown-up people is that they should do no sort of injury to the children. Take heed that ye offend not, despise not, hinder not. One of these little ones. I just realized it's ye offend not, not offend ye not. This is probably why I shouldn't use ye in ordinary commonplace speech. So when we think about the chief thing for a grown-up person is to do no harm to a child, this pairs so well with her tool on masterly and activity, which is what I actually talked about last time in our other YouTube video for principle number three. Masterly and activity is a wise, waiting, watchful way of mothering in which you are kind of hands off because you've created good habits and boundaries where within those your kids can experience an ordered freedom. By doing that, you kind of remove a lot of the moments and temptations to do these things that Mason says, actually that Mason says Christ says you should not do. Now, I wanna say right now, if you are homeschooling and if you are interested in Mason, my guess is you are probably not trying to harm your children. You are probably like me and you love your kids and you are trying to do what you think is best for your kids. And I wanna say that even though we really love them, we still do harm, but this framework hopefully will help. Okay, so ye offend not. What does that mean? There are a lot of stumbling blocks that we moms unintentionally or intentionally put in our kids' way and it causes them to fall. So the first one could be confusing the moral law. We might do that when we laugh at baby sins or when we arbitrarily make up rules or when we give rules in our house that we ourselves do not have to follow. When we tease about being good or being bad when the child is doing the opposite. It's whenever we confuse their consciences so that rather than supporting them and directing them towards what's right, we actually make it difficult for them to know what's right. The second thing we do is confuse their health. You know there's a lot of talk on the internet about like, does your kid need a snack? Do they need a nap? Have they gone outside today? Sometimes I can feel like it doesn't matter. If you're hungry, you need to learn to obey. There's an entire generation that uses the word hangry as a real excuse for their behavior. And that's what happens when you treat kids a little too delicately about their snack times. But at the same time, we are embodied beings. We have bodies. They need sleep, they need food. If you sugar your kid up and then wonder why they're not listening to you, it might be because you've actually made it really hard for them to do so. The next thing we confuse is the intellectual life. 
We can act like learning is a drag or we read them twaddly books we let them watch twaddly shows and we make it hard for their minds to feast on the very best of ideas because we don't watch what's coming into their minds. We can also confuse the moral life. So Mason talks about a mom who clearly plays favorites, which makes it hard for one of her kids to love both mom and that sibling. We don't want to do things that tempt our children towards sin. Okay, so second, ye despise not. I know what you're thinking. I don't despise my kids. What could you mean? Well, what Mason means when she talks about despise not is not respecting your kids as full persons or treating them less than. There are a couple ways we do that. First, she talks about leaving your child in the care of an improper person. Now, back then she was probably talking about like a nursemaid or someone who may have um, maybe a governess who might have educated your children, maybe um, the staff in your house. This does not mean that if your child spends any time with a caretaker or possibly if you're watching this and they even go to school, that that's necessarily bad. What it does mean is you need to assess the quality of the people with whom you leave your children. And that would also mean the screens you give your children. It's worth asking in this modern age because a lot of times people use screens as babysitters. Secondly, moms can repeatedly give their best to everybody else, but not their families. There's a lot for a mom to do, and we need to be well-rested, well-fed, well-cared for emotionally, spiritually. We need to be outside ourselves. Basically, you have to take care of yourself. Otherwise, you are just digging at the bottom of the barrel trying to offer something to your family because you've been too busy, maybe staying up late, hanging out with friends. Maybe you are too distracted on your phone because you're texting people. Maybe you haven't read a good book because you just kind of flit your time away on social media. It's not so good for your kids. And lastly, it would be letting bad habits grow. If you leave your child sitting in sin or sitting on a habit track that will lead to an improper and painful life for them, it's not showing that you respect them or that your love is even motivating you to right action. Basically, you're despising your kids in Mason's words. And lastly is hinder not. And Mason is referring to their relationship with God. Don't keep them from God. Uh, don't make light of their relationship with God. Don't jump on them because they can't explain their relationship with God or what they believe in the most eloquent and perfect of language. Um, yes, we should correct major theological error about what they believe about God or the world or how they're supposed to act, but encourage them. Don't try and make coming to God so difficult for them and have to be so exact that they choose just not to do it. It's actually the worst of these three things, in Mason's opinion, and I think most of us who love God would agree. So that's a very easy framework to just kind of check yourself on as you are interacting with your kids and assessing the rhythms in your home. Remember, do not despise, do not offend, and do not hinder. Next week over on the podcast, and then two weeks back over here, we're gonna be talking about the three instruments that a mother teacher actually does have to motivate their child and to get them to learn. We have the atmosphere, discipline, or habits, and a life, which is a generous curriculum. So. I will hopefully see you guys over on the podcast. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in two weeks.